Hey guys, Josh here. In our last video, I announced that we are working on a new tutorial series. I'm happy to announce that with that tutorial series, we'll be providing you with free assets to use to create your own environments. For more updates on the new series and the free assets, hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Hope you guys find today's video helpful and I'll talk to you guys later. Hello, my name is Joshua Mutu and welcome to Pixelmake. In our last video, we created our wheels and tread animation. And then with a C Sharp script, we linked those animations to our horizontal controls. We then created our aim animation using a blend tree. And then with a C Sharp script, we linked that blend tree to our vertical controls. Links to those videos will be on screen and in the description below. Just a quick reminder, the end result of this series will look something like this. Where you can move left and right with animations, you can jump, you can also aim the cannon up and down, as well as shooting the bullets in the direction of the cannon. Also, when the bullets come in contact with the ground, they explode. The animation was created by another member of the team. In today's video, we're going to be creating our explosion animation, and then spawn that explosion when the bullet hits the ground. The difficulty of today's video is the fluffy difficulty, so it won't be that hard to do. The assets we'll be using in today's video will be available to download for free. The link will be in the description below. So what I've done is in our sprites folder, I've imported our explosion sprites. And what I'm gonna do is click and drag the eighth sprite into our scene. So at the moment, the sprite is too big. So I'm gonna scale it down to about 0.5. So once I've done that, I'm gonna be using the animation tab to create our explosion animation. If you don't have the animation tab open, you can go to window and animation. You can also use the shortcut control 6. So I'm going to move our animation tab and snap it to the bottom of our scene so we can access our sprites folder. So before we create our animation, I'm going to rename our sprite to explosion. Once I've done that, I'm going to click create and then go to our assets folder, and then go to our animations folder and save this animation as explosion anim then what I want to do is select the first sprite and then go all the way down to the bottom and whilst holding the shift button select the last sprite then what I want to do is uh, click and drag our sprites into our animation so I'm just going to zoom into our explosion sprite and if I play the animation you'll see that the animation is way too fast so to slow it down uh, we can change the frame rate so at the moment it's set to 60 so I'm going to set it to 30 and again it's still too fast so I'm going to lower it down to 20 just a little bit too fast so I'm going to lower it down to 15 and there we go so I'm going to stop the uh, animation um, and all we need to do now is modify our bullet destroy script so that when the bullet uh, comes in contact with the ground, we also spawn the explosion object. So before we go into the script, I'm going to go to our assets folder, then go to our prefabs folder and create our explosion prefab. Then I'm going to go into our scripts folder and open up our bullet destroy script. And the first thing we're going to create is a public game object and I'm going to call this explosion and then what we want to do is modify our if collided if statement so I'm going to add some curly brackets here and inside those brackets just like our bullet spawn script we're going to instantiate our explosion object so instantiate brackets and the object we want to instantiate is explosion and we want it to be at our bullets position so we're going to be using our bullet transform uh, variable so bullet dot position and but we don't want the rotation to be the same as the bullet so I'm going to say transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion 
dot identity. And what this does, it sets the rotation of an object to 0, 0, 0. So what we're doing is instantiating or cloning our explosion object at our bullet's position. And then we're going to set the rotation to 0. So I'm going to save that. Go back to Unity. Uh, go into our Assets folder. Then go into our Prefabs folder. Select our bullet. And what we want to do is drag our explosion prefab into our bullet destroy script. So if I run the game and then fire the bullet, we now spawn the explosion object, but you'll notice that the animation is looping and we don't want that. And also we want the explosion object to be destroyed after the animation is finished. So I'm going to come out of that. Uh, so I'm going to go back to our assets folder and then go into our animations folder, select our explosion anim and then turn loop time off. So if you run the game again you'll notice that the animation now doesn't loop but we still have our explosion object. So what we're going to do is create a C sharp script to destroy that explosion object. So I'm going to go into our scripts folder, then right click, create, C sharp script, and I'm going to call this explosion underscore destroy. So I'm going to open that up, get rid of all this, and all we want to do is access the fixed update function and then destroy the game object after a few seconds. So void, fixed update, brackets, curly brackets and we want to destroy brackets game object and then to destroy the game object after a few seconds we do a comma and because we've set it to 15 frames per second and there are roughly a total of 45 frames I'm going to set this to 3.0f so it destroys the game object directly after the animation has finished. So I'm going to add a semicolon there and then save our script, go back to Unity, select our explosion object, then click and drag our explosion destroy script onto our explosion object. Then all we've got to do is apply our changes. So if I run the game again, keep an eye on the uh, hierarchy and then when I fire the bullet into the ground, after the animation has done, the object gets destroyed. So that's all we're doing for today's video. Feel free to tune back next time we'll be setting up our camera to follow our tank. If you found today's video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Unity 3D. And don't forget, if you want more updates on the new series, hit that subscribe button and follow us on Twitter and Facebook so you can get all the updates. My name is Joshua Mutu and thanks for watching.